Tide pools can be dangerous. Lifting up rocks is like opening a Kinder Egg surprise. Sometimes you see beautiful animals hidden in there. Sometimes you end up touching a venomous, life-threatening sea creature. So before you venture out, here's what you need to know about tide pools, how to prevent dangers and identify them easily without putting yourself or your loved ones at risk. Let's get started. Tide pools are small pockets of seawater trapped in depressions along rocky coastlines. They form part of the intertidal zone, the area between the high and low tide marks that gets submerged and exposed twice a day. Tide pools are popular places to see beautiful marine life up close, such as sea stars, crabs, colorful tropical fish, anemones, and so on. Maybe you're on vacation with your family, and the little ones are so curious to explore and discover aquatic creatures under the rocks, like crabs or sea stars, or even something as common as collecting seashells. But not all creatures are safe, some can be fatal. So let's start out with the most dangerous on the list, the blue-ringed octopus. There are four kinds of blue-ringed octopuses, varying in size and featuring blue rings or stripes. This species is extremely dangerous and without urgent medical help, it can cause death in less than one hour. Their bite delivers a potent neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin, causing severe respiratory problems. The bite is painless, which makes it more dangerous because you might not even know you've been bitten until symptoms like nausea, fever, intense headaches and difficulty moving set in. Case reports show a four-year-old boy was bitten by a blue-ringed octopus at Queensland Beach. Within 10 minutes, he vomited, lost the ability to stand and experienced blurred vision. By the time he arrived at the emergency department 20 minutes later, he had acute skeletal muscle weakness. He was intubated and ventilated for 17 hours, with spontaneous muscle activity resuming around 15 hours post-envenomation. He recovered in a pediatric intensive care unit. Unfortunately, young ones can be tempted when exploring tide pools and lifting rocks to touch this dangerous octopus species, which can seem interesting due to its bright blue rings. So it's important to warn those around tide pools about this dangerous species and to avoid contact. Cone snails. There are over 500 species of predatory cone snails, but two in particular can be a threat to humans, the textile cone snail and the geographic cone snail. Cone snail venom contains conotoxins that disrupt nerve and muscle functions through various pathways, including ion channels and hormone mimicry. Alpha conotoxins can cause paralysis by blocking muscle controlling receptors. Developing effective anti-venom is challenging due to the diverse effects of these toxins across different cone snail species. Their habitat varies from sandy beaches to shallow waters around corals, but they can also be found in tide pools. Accidents can happen when cone snails are mistaken for shells or gravel due to their camouflage and they are touched, or when they are stepped on accidentally due to inadequate footwear for tide pool exploration. In 2015, a tourist worker was stung by a deadly cone snail. A 25-year-old crew member was stung by a cone snail near Whitehaven Beach, Whitsunday, Ireland, causing his respiratory system to start shutting down. Rescue quickly evacuated him, landing a helicopter on a narrow sand patch at Tong Bay. The man was taken to Mackay Bay's hospital and remained in stable condition. Cone snail venom can cause muscle paralysis, respiratory failure and be fatal, said University of Queensland professor David Craig. Only 36 people have died from cone snail stings in the last 90 years. Stonefish The stonefish is also considered one of the most venomous fish in the world, according to the Australian Museum. It is a master of camouflage and is often mistaken for a rock or a piece of coral. It prefers to hide in wet sand around beaches and tide pool areas. The stonefish gets its name because it looks like a stone, making it terrifying for beachgoers. What makes it even more dangerous is that if disturbed, it doesn't swim away. Instead, it injects powerful venom through its 13 dorsal spines when it feels threatened. Stonefish venoms have both cardiovascular and neuromuscular toxicity. The more venom that is injected, the worse it is for you. Stings result in terrible pain, swelling, necrosis, which is tissue death, and even death. One victim wrote online, later reported by ABC News, that after being stung on the finger, it was like having each knuckle, then the wrist, 
elbow and shoulder being hit in turn with a sledgehammer over the course of about an hour. To protect yourself and your loved ones from this venomous species of fish, wear appropriate footwear with thick, sturdy soles as the needle-like spines of a stonefish can easily penetrate rubber or foam shoes. Also be careful where you step and check the area before stepping, preferably with a stick or your foot without putting too much pressure as this activates their defensive mode and releases the venom. The Yellow-Bellied Sea Snake Although rare, yellow-bellied sea snakes can sometimes wash up on beaches and hide in shaded areas under rocks and between stones in tide pools. In this video, Kayat Patterson shows how he finds and catches a yellow-bellied sea snake while exploring tide pools. I recommend you watch this video and you can find the link in the description. So how can you identify a yellow-bellied sea snake if you encounter one in tide pools? Well, yellow-bellied sea snakes, recognized by their distinctive yellow underside and dark upper body, can occasionally be found in tide pools, especially in tropical and subtropical regions. While their venom is highly potent, bites are rare and typically occur when fishermen attempt to remove them from fishing nets according to waikikiaquarium.org. Their venom contains several neurotoxins and isotoxins, making it a powerful nerve toxin that blocks communication between nerves and muscles. Despite this, yellow-bellied sea snakes are considered more docile compared to other sea snakes. Interestingly, when biting defensively, they often do not inject venom. Studies suggest that two out of three defensive bites are venom-free. The sea anemones. Sea anemones often look like underwater flowers, with brightly colored tentacles that sway with the water's movement. Due to their beautiful appearance, they can spark curiosity and the impulse to touch them. While not the most dangerous, they can still cause mild irritation and allergic reactions. Sea anemones are usually anchored to rocks or other surfaces in tide pools. Two species in particular can cause irritation and stinging pain. Bidlet anemone. While not the most dangerous, it can still cause mild irritation and allergic reactions, and giant green anemone. Larger and more potent, their stings can cause more significant irritation. Sea anemones have specialized cells called nematocysts, which contain venom-filled harpoons. When triggered by touch, these harpoons inject venom into the potential threat. The venom contains neurotoxins and other compounds that can cause pain, swelling, and in some cases, more severe allergic reactions. So wrapping it up, tide pools are incredible windows into the ocean's ecosystem, offering a chance for a relaxing walk in nature, photographing marine life, and spending time with friends and family. However, it's crucial to explore tide pools alongside someone more experienced who can guide you on what is safe to do. If you're the most experienced one, make sure to warn others about potential dangers and seek medical help immediately in case of accidents. And if you found this video helpful, share it with your friends and subscribe to Ocean Explorers to learn more about ocean life. Thank you for watching!